Hey guys, welcome back to the Magic Box Project. Today I'm going to introduce you to two new things. Number one is going to be a switch to turn things off and on. And number two will be a new sensor called the sound sensor. Uh, so these will be two great new projects, uh, little sub projects to add to our big project. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, I want to talk to you about this sensor right here. Uh, this is a sound sensor. Uh, let's check this out. This is the microphone here. So when we start using it, we want to make sure that we speak into here. Um, the other thing is this right here. This is also a potentiometer. We've learned about potentiometers uh, in uh, other classes, but you'll see you can actually stick a screwdriver into this little uh, crosshair right here and turn it. And as you turn it, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it adjusts the sensitivity of your microphone. So if you turn it all the way one way, then it's going to be super, super sensitive. If you turn it all the way the other way, it's going to be super, super not sensitive. So sensitive means that it can hear things from really far away. Like even if you whisper to it, it could probably hear you. And if it's turned all the way so it's not sensitive, it like it becomes deaf. No matter how loud you are, it won't be able to hear you. So you probably want to turn it somewhere in the middle, but we'll go over that um, once we start playing with it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. These three pins, one, two, three, it says, uh, let me turn it like this, so it's right side up. There's out, GND, and VCC. All right, out is going to go to a signal pin, whatever it's going to be on our noggin, like whatever pin number. GND goes to GND, VCC goes to 5V. All right, so let's uh, see what's going to, let's put this here, and let's draw this out. Okay, so here's our noggin. Just put nog, all right. And uh, here's our sound sensor. Okay, we have out is O, G. For G and D, and V for VCC. Okay, so V is going to go to 5V. The G is going to go to G and D, or I'll just put G because I'm running out of room here. And O, uh, pin 10 is open. So let's put 10 here. And I got to go all the way around because I didn't plan this so well, but we can still make it work. Okay, so the out will be 10. So what's going to happen is whenever you speak, it's going to go to the speaker, okay, the speaker here. And then if it hears something, it's going to send it from the out and send it to pen 10. So later, when we wire this up, we want to see if um, we see anything on pin 10. So pin 10 is going to be an input uh, that will detect, help us detect if our sound sensor is seeing anything. All right, so we'll um, leave it here for now. Let's go ahead and try to wire this thing up. All right, I'm trying my best to give you a good view right here. I already mounted my breadboard um, and also my noggin to my box so i just kind of want to keep it all together here uh, but i think you can get a pretty good view okay so here is my um sensor out g and d and vcc okay i'm gonna put this and stick this in one on each row okay out so out is going to be this row right here is out okay then it's G and D is this row, and then VCC is that one. So let's go ahead and wire that up. I'll start with um, VCC. So right here, that's going to go to 5V, so I'm using a red wire. And uh, let's see. Now, since I kept it color-coded, I know that this red wire right here, that's... 5v because i always use red for 5v so i can just put it in the same row so there we go so now i got 5v that was easy and then let's do um gnd for 
GND, I always want to use a black wire. So let's take this and GND. Let's connect GND. Now, black, this row right here is already GND, so let's stick it in there. Okay, so that's GND. That's easy. And then last but not least, my out signal. I'm going to use um, a yellow wire. Let's take my out signal and let's connect this to pin number 10. Pin number 10 is over here. Pin number 10. That's number 10. There we go. So we learned about the sound sensor. Let's learn about this guy, the switch. So this is a sliding switch. The reason why we call it a sliding switch is because you can slide that thing back and forth. Okay. Now, let me draw this bigger so that you can see. Three legs. So what we're going to do is we want to control the middle pin. Okay. So I'm going to call this middle pin. Is B. The outer one is C. The other outer one, first one in this drawing, is A. Okay, I'm going to show you where I'm going to connect B. Let's connect B to number 11 on the noggin, okay? So 11 goes like that. B. And then C, one of these things on the, one of the pins on the outside, put an X there. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to leave it blank. Okay. And then A, this pin right there, that's A. Okay. We're going to connect that to G and D. Now I'm kind of running out of room. I should have probably drawn this thing bigger. This is it happens in engineering. You just got to roll with it, figure it out. Right. So I'm going to. Just put another G here. Okay. The G, this one, is going to go to A. Can't really see, make it out. Just trust me, guys. This thing right here is supposed to be a G. All right. So here's what happens. Right now, so what happens is that you can move this switch. that way or you can move it that way so here's how this works guys if i move the switch this way what happens is that the switch becomes like i'm going to draw these little dashes it's going to become like that okay so it becomes i'm just going to fill it in so that you can see the switch becomes in this position, and I'm going to even color it to make it even more clear. Okay? If I move it that way, the switch is here, and now look what happens. A becomes connected to B. So if A becomes B, then let's look at pin 11. What does pin 11 become? 11 is connected to B, which is then connected to A, which is connected to G, which is G and D. So when the switch is over here, 11 becomes G and D. Because look, it connects like that. Now what happens if I slide it this way? So I'm going to, this one will be harder to draw. So I'll put dots. So when I slide the switch this way, that means that, and I'm going to use this red Okay, when I slide it that way, that means the switch is now over here. And that also means that this is no longer there, right? Because we moved, we moved the switch that way. So don't, so that's why I'm Xing it out. That's not there anymore. 
So if, if that's the case, I want you to see where B is going to be connected to. Well, when you slide it that way, B is now connected to C. Okay? Now, if you remember, B is connected to pin 11. So here's my question. When I slide it there, what is pin 11 connected to? Okay? We're thinking. We're thinking. So pin 11 is connected to B. I know that. Now, what is B connected to? Is it connected over here? No, it's not connected over here because I slid it that way. Is it connected to here? Yes, B is now connected to C. Now, what is C connected to? Nothing. We actually connected it to absolutely nothing. So when I slide it this way, 11 becomes nothing. When I slide it this way, 11 becomes G and D because it's going to go through this way. I think that's enough of that for now. Let's go ahead and wire this guy up, and then we can do coding. All right, guys, here we go. Here's our breadboard view again. We've got our um, switch here. Our switch here with the three, let me get it in view, with our three pins. So first thing we need to do is put it onto the breadboard. Make sure all the pins are on its own row. So there's a little section right here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, there we go. So I've got my switch in there, and every pin is on its own row. Now you got to be careful here, okay? So when you start wiring, I want to make sure that you know where the pins are. It can be confusing, so if you're not sure, you got to like lift it a little bit. Okay, there's so those are the rows of my pins. Okay, I'm gonna push it back. I know there's a lot of stuff on here now. We got all those components on. Now, if you remember, the middle pin, we wanted it to connect it to 11. So I'm going to take um, a blue a blue wire. It doesn't really matter. It just sounds it's not red or black. If you have a, an extra green wire, that works too. But let's take the middle pin, okay? And we want to connect it to pin 11, which is over here. Pin 11 is here. Boom. Okay, and then we want it to connect the pin A. Now, it doesn't really matter, guys, which, which one it is, either like this one here or this one there. It doesn't ma really matter um, as long as you don't put it in the middle one because the middle one is for this wire, right? So I'm going to say I'm going to decide this one here is my A. So that's my top button there. Sorry, not top button, top row. Okay. And then this needs to go to G and D. So let's see, where are my G and Ds? Just got to find a row. I'm going to move this out of the way here so you can see better. Okay. If you see, there's a this black wire right here. That is G and D. So that entire row is G and D. Let's put it in that same row. There. Okay. Let's position that. Make sure we can. All right. We are good. This is some crazy wiring here, but the good news is we are totally done with all the wiring. Okay. Let's uh, let's test this out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with uh, this programming here. I have my magic box here with all the crazy wiring. I've already wired up the sound sensor and also the switch. The switch is right here. You can see. Let me move it. Move these wires a little bit. There. You can see the switch right there. It's kind of small, but there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to first wire up the switch. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So we've got, you got to go to Barnabas Robotics. And then here, you got to look for the button block. Now, you might be saying, you know, why is it that it says button, but we're using a switch? True, true. Uh, it's not a button that we have. It's a switch that we, that we have. But this will work as well. So at the button, and I'm going to 
click, we connected the button uh, to pin number 11. So I'm going to change 6 to 11. Now there's two things here. It's pressed or unpressed. What pressed means low and unpressed means high. So let's just keep it on uh, pressed. Okay, so if you remember from when we wired up the, the switch, we connected pin A or whatever, what one of the outside pins of the switch to G and D. So that means that when we slide the switch, sometimes uh, pin 11 will become G and D, which is the same as low. So that's why we're going to keep it on pressed here because pressed means low. Okay, now we're going to say something. We're going to say if pin 11 is pressed, we want to do something. So we need to go to control and we need a, um, let's use an if else. Let's slide our, slide our if else in there. Okay. And let's slide this here. Okay. So we're saying if pin 11 is pressed, I want to, let's make it print out something that says, Hello, and else, let's make it print something else. Let's print goodbye. All right, so hopefully what's going to happen is once we upload this, if pin 11 is touching GND, because again, G and D is same as low. And with our kind of confusing block here, but I'm trying to, don't worry, we'll get through it. In our confusing block here, pressed is also low. All right. So if pin 11 becomes low, it should print hello. If it's not low, it's going to print goodbye. Okay, so let's upload this. See what happens. All right, cool, cool. Now let's click my serial monitor. Okay, it's saying goodbye. We're seeing goodbye. That means that pin 11 is not low because if it was low, it would be saying hello. So let's make it low. So what could we do? Well, let's flip the switch. Okay, so I'm going to move these out of the way so you can see them. Use my pencil. Here's my... Let's flip it. Let's slide it. Check it out. It is saying hello. Here, I think it, I might have touched something. Let's upload again. I might have like touched some wires or something. Okay, let's open serial monitor. There, now it's saying hello. Very good. If I switch it back, it should say goodbye. Let me do that. Switching it back. Now it's saying goodbye. All right, so that was pretty easy, right? So we're saying now we use a switch to control something on our magic box. Now let's go to the next step. Let's Let's make it so that if it's switched like it's saying while it's saying goodbye it all it closes the box and while it's saying hello it opens the box so should we try that all right so goodbye when it's saying goodbye we want to close the box i'm going to move this to the side so we need to go to pins and get my servo and it was pin nine which was our our um servo and then i believe it was zero to close and then for me it was 90. so when it's hello i want to go to open all right let's upload so 90 should be to open for hello Okay, 
So it's saying goodbye, and I heard something. See my box here? Okay, it's it's not it's not open yet. Here I'm gonna zoom out a little bit on my there. So now you can kind of see. All right. If I flip the switch, it should start saying hello and it should open. Are we ready? I'm ready for this, man. Dude, I flipped the switch and it worked. Okay, now if I want to close it, I flip the switch again. The switch is controlling my box. Awesome, awesome. I just got to do it one more time. Let's see. Okay, we got a switch controlling the box. Excellent. Let's go ahead and move to the next step. All right, so now let's play a little bit with this uh, sound sensor. All right. Okay, so before we start, let's remember where did we plug in the sound sensor? Uh, the middle pin... Or not the middle pin. The middle pin was ground, G and D. Uh, it was one of the outer pins. The output was connected to pin 10. Okay, so remember that. So we have to look at pin 10 when we're dealing with the sensor. So let's do this. Um, I'd like to first start with, like, I want to make sure that my noggin is able to read information from the sensor. So let's use some serial prints, okay? The communication, serial print. Now I want to print um, sound sensor data, okay? And um, I need to go to pins, and I want to go to digital pin. Now this is super easy. All I gotta say is digital pin and pin number. 10 because that's what I connected the output of the sensor to. Okay, so I got that going. Now I just need to put this into here, but I need a I need a glue. So I go here, uh, pick this glue. Okay. So what's going to happen is that it's just going to print out um, whatever it sees there. All right, let's upload this. Okay, let's turn on my serial monitor. Hello, do you see anything? Hello, hello. Okay, it's just saying zero. So you see zero, zero, zero. All right, so a couple things could be going on here. Maybe um, the sensor is broken. Maybe I wired it incorrectly, okay? If I check those two things, I think they're probably right because I don't make mistakes when I, you know, wire up that. Just kidding, I do make mistakes, but but I think we're pretty careful. So I think the wiring is fine. And if you look at it, check it out. You can see you see that little light right there? That little light means that the board is getting power, this little green light. So it's the wiring's probably okay. So what could it be? Well, you remember that there's this little dial here? All right, I went ahead and and uh, modified the view a little bit so that you can see this dial here. So let's turn that. Maybe the sensitivity is too low so because it can't hear anything. So I'm going to put a screwdriver in here and turn it. See what happens. Oh, see if I turn it all the way. Now it's one, but one. Hello, hello, hello. I should see like zero when I don't say anything and one when I do say something. So I turn it too far, let me turn the other way. Okay, now it's zero. Oh, but look, hello, hello. You see how I, it, there's some ones? Hello. All right, I think we're in business. Okay, I'm gonna put this here. Now, let's do something here. Let's do something, let's have some fun here, all right? So now let's say if, if I hear something, open the box. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have this up here. We can leave that there. We can leave that there for now. Let's go um, control. 
if else. And then I need a test. And let's go with, uh, I need an equal, equal this one. Okay. So I need to say if digital pin 10, and remember if I hear something, it becomes one. So then I go here, variables and constants. And... And I can't, apparently, I can't put the one. That's okay. You can use high. High is the same as one. Digital pin 10 equals high. So if it's high, then I want to open my box. So it's pin 9 and angle. 90. Else, if I don't hear anything, close it. So pin 9, 0. All right. So my code's going to just going to print out what it's seeing on the serial monitor. So that's fine. Then it's going to say if pin 10 is 1 or high, it's going to open the box else it's going to close it. Let's do this. Hello. 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 Now it's so it's kind of working but it's like closing really quickly. So let's add a delay so it when it opens it stays open. I'm going to say once it sees something Open for three three thousand. Okay, so once it hears me, it should open for three thousand and then close. Okay, you see how it's opening by itself. You know what I think? When it closes, it makes a sound too, so that be, could be causing it to like trigger. So why don't I do this? When I cl when I close, I'm going to delay for a little bit so that it won't so so it's going to like do nothing for a little bit of time before it starts looking for sound again. So all we have to do is when it says 90, so that's for closing, let's put a delay after the servo right here so that it just sits there and does nothing before it starts looking for sound again. So I'm going to put a delay and uh, 1,000. We'll say do nothing for 1,000 and then loop back and look for sound again. Let me upload. It should help us. Hello. Hello. Oh, but now we have another problem, I think. So that's not going to work either. The reason that it's not going to work is that your code's looping, OK? And whenever it's going to say, start here and say, is uh, pin 10 high? Do I hear something? If so, open the box, stay open, and then close. Okay. Now, what if it comes, goes here, and then goes, goes from the beginning and says, do I hear anything? If it doesn't hear anything, it's going to jump down here. And it's going to do this, and then delay 1,000. And then it's going to, so if it doesn't hear anything, it's going to, Close, delay 1,000. Close, delay 1,000. The problem now is the amount of time that it's spending looking for, uh, listening for sound is so little now. So we actually have to move this away. So this delay helps us in one hand, but it then hurts us on the other hand. So this is a tough problem. OK, so let me upload here. Hello. OK, so it opens. Close. See, it's still like. 
So it closes, makes a sound, sees it hits that sound, and then it causes the trigger again. So how can we fix that to have it still work? Okay, I got an idea. Before, we would put this delay here. That's actually not where we want it. We want the delay up here. So why don't we do this? We're going to open. So if we hear a sound, we're going to open. And we're going to keep it open for 3,000. Then right after, I'm going to close by doing a zero angle. And then I'm going to wait one second. And then keep going. So let's let's try this. Hello. Oh, it's still, so I still have that problem where it kind of opens on its own. Let's, let's add more of a delay. Let's put, after it closes, let's put 3000. So it's going to open for 3,000, then close, and then wait here for 3,000, and then after that, start looking again. Okay, uploading. Hello. I'm still having issues. So now, you know, we're kind of stuck a little bit so why is it doing this now i'm thinking maybe it has something to do with this the sensitivity thing all right so now let's let's play with that a little bit more all right you know what else it could be i don't know if you can hear it in in the camera but when the motor is at certain positions it makes a sound. See, watch this. I'm just going to close it. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that. Like, you can hear this little buzzing sound from the motor. That sound could be causing our sound sensor to trigger. So how do we make it so that it's totally silent so that it doesn't trigger that? Well, let's try changing the angle. So zero, you get a sound. Let me try one. Oh my goodness. Actually, if you do one, there's no sound. Okay. Interesting, right? Okay, so now... Um, so this is something you guys will have to experiment with as well. You want your motor to be quiet when it's not moving because that could affect your sound sensor. So this is real engineering, guys. This is... I'm glad we were able to do this together. Now, I'm going to open mine. And see if it makes the motor make sound. Okay, at 90, there's no sound. Okay, so now that we know 90, it opens and there's no motor sound. 1, it closes and there's no motor sound. The next thing that, that I want, guys, is um, I want to test the sensitivity again, make sure that I have the right settings on my sensitivity. All right, let's open serial monitor. All right, so this is, I can't hear anything. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear my ones? Do I, oh, there's some ones. Hello, hello. So that's probably a good place. Can you, can you hear me? Okay, cool. It can hear me. Now let's try this. All right, we're gonna say if I hear something, open, else, close. Except this time I have it one instead of zero, so the motor is quiet. So now let's upload this. Okay. Hello? 
Hello? Oh, I think it's... Hello, can you... Are you gonna move? Hello? Oh, it's working a lot better now. Already. So, I think it did have something to do with that motor. Hello? Are you listening to me? Look, the box follows my voice. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, let's keep it open for 3,000. Hello. When it tries to close, what happens is that there's a couple of things that's happening. The motor makes sound. The motor itself, I can hear it. I don't know if you can. The motor's making sound when it's trying to close. And if it does close all the way, this part, the top of the lid hits right here. And then it probably triggers the sound again. So how are we going to fix that? We're going to say that right here on our code, we're going to open for three seconds. And then before we start looking for sound again, we're going to close it. And again, we want to do number one, angle one to close. And we're going to close it and leave it closed for three seconds. That should be better. Open Sesame. Hello. Okay. Our box is totally working. Oh, that was a little bit too loud. Open. Pretty cool. Pretty cool.